Obviously, we have to start by talking about the chair. Everything in my desk setup has a really precise reason for why I got it. Everything is, is somewhat analytical, but I feel like that's a good thing. And when you curate your own desk space, you really wanna choose stuff that's personal to you, that means a lot. It doesn't matter if other people like it or if it works for them, it matters what works for you. And that's kind of how I've designed my own space. So we have to start by talking about the chair. This is a Herman Miller chair. And I think to a lot of people, a name like Herman Miller is like, oh wow, you know, like that's a, that's a furniture flex usually. Herman Miller has some crazy couches. They're one of the oldest in the business that's been doing Doing this. Here's the thing. So this was actually the the first part of my desk setup like years ago. I got this couch while I was in college and I didn't get it when I had any money. I didn't get it. I didn't buy it from the store. I got it on Facebook Marketplace. So the story is around the turn of the new year, I think it was like probably 2017, 2018, one of the two, I kind of had this realization that if I'm going to think about how I spend my money, a solid rule of thumb is, is that if it touches my body for more than six hours, it should be the best thing that I can reasonably afford, right? And that makes sense. If you think of how much people spend on like clothes or, you know, just stuff that you wear twice, you know, I've done it. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it. I've spent money on stuff that I'm only using a couple times out of the year. But then you look, you go back to the core essentials like your bed, you know, maybe a chair that you sit on in your room, your furniture, your couch, your desk setup, and your chair. If you're going to spend a substantial amount of time there, you should probably try to upgrade those as much as possible. Anyway, so that's the story for how I got this thing. I was peeking around for a quality chair and I just saw this one. I didn't even know what Herman Miller was at the time, but it was this random tech guy in, um, in Texas and he like cut me a deal and I think he sold me the chair. It was like 235 bucks, which was uh, solid. <laughs> it's a good deal. So I threw this cushion on top of it just because it adds extra comfort. If I'm working really long hours, you want your chair to be as comfortable as possible. Like, yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah, it looks decent, but I also don't want to, you know, experience back pain and everything. So I made sure to get one of these, which can really help. As you can see, it's been through the ringer. Looks like a dog, you know, ate a chunk out of it. I actually do think that Neutron, when Neutron was a little puppy, one of the reasons why is he didn't do all the damage. I won't put all the blame on him. He's staring at me like, you better not. I, uh, I was, he was in my lap, right? Because I got him during COVID. I was doing law school stuff. And he like chomped out of the arm. Now it's not there, but uh, <laughs> it's still a good chair. I, I just need to replace it. Like there's a, repl there's a replacement thing for this arm. I know it's out there. I just need to, you know, pull the trigger and get it. Anyways, this is the chair. It's a Herman Miller. I think it's called the Sile chair, S-A-Y-L. Very comfortable, very enjoyable experience. Never disliked it. And I've had it for, you know, better part of five or six years. I'm gonna pull the chair out of the way so that you can actually see what's going on. Ugh. This might be like one of the sickest aspects of my place. The viewing angle isn't great when you're a camera, but these things are mad accessible. They have everything I need tucked right here in the corner. If I need to pull a cord out, if I need to grab some technology, if I need to grab another phone, I have it all right here. The things I do for y'all. The things that I do. What's that phrase that's like, pause for the dress? Or is it like a moment for the dress? <laughs> a moment for these rainbow pivot cabinets. Poor Neutron is no longer in frame, but we have to talk about these cabinets. So these are a recent find. I actually got these from the uh, Museum of Modern Art, the MoMA design store, which let me just say again, not sponsored. Love the pics. They have just the most like, interesting, colorful, almost childlike designs that are still yet really sophisticated. Big fan, big fan. And this is no exception. So this is actually a pivot cabinet. And if you don't know what a pivot cabinet is, let me show you. A pivot cabinet pivots. So rather than coming straight out, each of the drawers will line up sequentially like this. There we go. That's more. We did, we did a slightly better job making it symmetrical. Again, simple, right? But like, where do you see one of these? It's a nice feature and it's aesthetically, rather than just like ripping open a drawer and grabbing some supplies, it's nice to have it swing out. It just feels clean. I don't think there's magnets. Actually, I was wrong. I was always wondering if there was magnets. I, I just looked behind it and sure enough, there is. There's these really small magnets on the back so that each part like clicks into place. Oh yeah, that's the stuff just melts in your mouth. It's finger looking good. It's, <laughs> it's great. Pivot cabinets are just, they're a nice touch. And the rainbow color of course works well. Why did I choose this color, by the way? Let's talk about that. So think about it. As you're sitting here, I mean, these are always tucked in there, right? I just pulled them out so I could show you. But as this is tucked in there, you have a bunch of, you have like a big color ensemble. So you have like the blue in the couch, you have the white in the walls, you have the red in the chair, and you wanna also present some colors that are not quite the same so that it doesn't feel like, if it was like a brown, white, and blue cabinet set, I don't know, it might feel like it's just too much of the same stuff that we have. You wanted to introduce something new without feeling like, you know, it's too loud or too aggressive. 
And let's be clear, this is, de this is definitely loud and aggressive, but it's fun. It's sick. I love it. I love it for what it does. So the rainbow color pattern is awesome. I'm a big fan of how it, how it came together. And this is, this is, okay, so getting back on track. This is exactly what allowed me to clear up my desk space. It's like I told you, I had all these microchips, had all this stuff in the way. Thanks to having this tucked away in here. Just don't want to ding anything. There we go. There we go. Let's make sure it opens. Yes. Beautiful. The basis of the idea, the basis of the idea is you want to have some colors that create a complement, right? But you want also want to have colors that are very different, that kind of pop a bit so that the unit isn't just blending or matching. It's, it's, it's putting in work from a design perspective. And so that's what I've done. These pivot cabinets are here to stay. And that's what allowed me to clear up the desk space as I explained and make it look nice. So I'm a big fan of them. I'll probably, you know, I'll probably change something about the decor up top. I have a little like wooden knot structure that just kind of looks cool there, but it doesn't have to stay there. It might move at some point. Of course, wouldn't be complete without the bonus iPad. This thing's old. I'm not really proud of how long I've had this thing, but it technically still functions, and so I can't get too mad. It gets the job done, and it's useful to have a second display if I want to, you know, chat with one of my friends on Discord or send texts while I'm looking at something else on the screen. It's nice to have an additional screen display. A lot of people have chided me for not having like a second monitor. And I do have, there is a sneak peek, I will tell you, I'll spill the beans. There is a plan to build a second workstation somewhere in this house that will remain nameless. It's gonna come in probably about two months or so. It's, you know, being developed right now. But in the meantime, rather than clog up this space visually, having an iPad here that I can move around that kind of does some of the work of an extra monitor has been enough for me. If you added another monitor, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I it'd be dope to have another massive screen there, but then like, how does that make the the rest of the place look, you know? And again, I'm not gonna shoot it down and say it's a terrible idea, it's just, I wanna be cautious about that. Like, I wanna be cautious about throwing money at a second monitor before, especially while I'm building a second workstation that's just, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be designed for multiple people, so. It's gonna have more monitors. That's one of the reasons why I've kept this, like, this is a simplified version of my workspace. It's not gonna go, like, crazy with a bunch of tech and a million monitors, you know? One of the other features that I love about the setup, beyond just how minimalist and clean it is, is the lighting. Now, you can't see the lighting that well, or at all, frankly. Uh, <laughs> it is very bright outside, but I'm gonna lower these blinds. You can see it a little better now. So at, uh, I don't ever really close these blinds. So I don't really ever have a need to. They're not really blinds. They're more like screens of, of a sort. They still allow a good amount of light in. They're designed to dim, but not blacken an environment to not completely pitch black it out. But they do a decent job of screening out some of the light and enough for me to show you the lights that I have behind. Setup, of course, looks even crazier at night because there's so much like, you don't have the visual distraction or light pollution. You just have beaming light all around you, which, you know, setting a good vibe, when you wanna get work done, like even if it's something small, like you can get some cheap string lights just to put on the back of your computer. If it's something that's gonna make the work experience a little more enjoyable, you should go for it. Like it's, it's your job, it's your experience of it. Why wouldn't you wanna improve that? It is so important for your work to not feel like work, for your work to feel natural, fun, something that you really, there we go. Something that you really enjoy doing and don't think of like a chore because the moment that you do, you're just not gonna do as much of it. Or at least, if you do do as much of it, you're gonna suffer more in the process. So anything that you can do to improve your workspace, to make it more aesthetic for you, more minimal, to show off more of the things you care about, whether that's like adding in a bunch of cute little plants or little objects, figurines, whatever it is, pictures of people, whatever it is that you are motivated by, that you feel you can get in the zone by having around you, make your desk space work for that, you know? It doesn't have to be any, anybody else's idea. As long as it makes you more productive, it's a good setup. And that is what mine does pretty well.